This report seems to, I suppose it could be criticised by many in terms of saying, shouldn't our government services be gold-plated? Shouldn't the standards be incredibly high? I think the issue is that we have public sector buyers who are overly risk-averse. They're too afraid to fail. So actually what we want is we want public servants who maybe they'll waste a few million pounds here or there, but overall they'll take chances on innovative startups and they'll actually deliver better public services, more technologically enabled public services. I think the issue is sometimes the requirements completely don't match what they're doing, you know. You might be running a small training service for civil servants and you might be required to have unlimited liability insurance and that's, that's essentially tips the thing from being a project that's worthwhile for you to do to a project that's no longer a real profit maker and it's just about breaking even. So all of these tight regulations on how the government can interact with businesses basically means that the only people who can afford to do business with the government are the big established players rather than the small startups. Yeah, and that creates a big risk, because we saw with the failure of Carillion, if you have big companies with many public sector procurement contracts all at once, what can happen is if they go bust or if something goes wrong, then that can have knock-on effects across across the whole public sector. Now, there are lots of different ways we throw up barriers. So one is the sort of excessive gold-plated standards. Another is a failure to advertise standards in a timely manner and a failure to let people know when procurement contracts are coming up again. Mm. Now, big companies, they can have a specialist team and literally they will know when the next contract for cleaning services in the Department for Business, uh, Energy and Industrial Strategy will come up. They know for a fact when that is. A small company who could probably provide the same service will not be able to do that. They won't have a member of staff looking at that. I suppose they don't have the big compliance departments and everything else. And I, I suppose this goes beyond just government services. It goes to the whole attitude towards regulation as a whole. So often the biggest companies are those that actually advocate in favour of big, onerous regulation, in favour of, of barriers to entry for other competitors. And we get this sort of crony capitalist state where only the biggest set the rules and exclude everyone else. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And, and I think this, these things can sort of happen by accident. Uh, you know, everyone will say, OK, we need to make sure that no one fails. And you've got these incentives, right? If you're a politician, a, a junior minister, or if even, you, if even you're a public sector manager and you're, you're in charge of a contract, you don't really get rewarded if you take a risk on a company and it turns out well. You mm. do get absolutely raked over the coals if something goes wrong. So as a result, they're overly risk averse. And what mm. that means is you end up with these contracts that only go to the big companies. Mm. You know, the saying, nobody got fired for buying from IBM. And mm. that's the problem across the public sector at the moment.